Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with the 37th installment of Black Girls on Television. How to get away with murder. That's all we got today. We thought we had Empire, but the World Series did continue on on Wednesday. And I guess I must say uh, congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. Somebody reminded me on top of the blogs yesterday that I did not congratulate you guys. You guys know I don't watch baseball at all. But nonetheless, I will say uh, congratulations to the team. Evidently, what Chicago has never ever won or they ain't won in a hundred years or some shit like that anyway whatever it is congratulations to them how to get away with murder though the review let's get to it shall we all right you guys the show opens two weeks in the future at the fire well after the fire annalise is in jail she's trying to go to sleep but she's also thinking about everything i guess worrying about everything all of a sudden, the investigators come in there and they let her know that they're charging her with arson and first-degree murder. She wants to know, you know, who's the charges, what happened, and they said that they have an anonymous source. That's all we know. Okay, then it jumps back two weeks earlier. We see Wes being questioned by the investigators that are investigating the father shooting in New York. He has his lawyer with him. They're asking him, you know, did they see the actual son of... Uh, of uh of mahoney anywhere in the vicinity and west lies and tells them yeah he saw him actually across the street in the doorway he had asked for directions i was thinking to myself like oh my god west is about to make this shit a whole lot worse okay annalise catches up with him and she's mad that he lied why did you do that he might have a stone you know a stone solid uh alibi and then they're gonna know that you lied and that's gonna be a bigger mess you know then west all of a sudden get that old pitiful woe is me it's all my fault look Okay, she was like, don't worry about it. Okay, let's go see about our new case. Okay, so the new pro bono case, a clinic case, whatever you're calling it. This woman, oh God, I can't think of what her name is. Is it Hazel? can't think whatever her name was but anyway she was poisoned by Annie Freeze and she's saying that her children are trying to kill her the problem with the case is that the children all can't stand the mama evidently the mama's been manipulative and mean and controlling and all of that as they grew up and now that they're older they've all kind of joked around that they were going to kill the mother that was kind of like a running joke so now they're all in a court case where the mother is saying that they tried to kill her and it's a conspiracy theory case Annalise puts the kids on it y'all give me a good suspect whoever does you know what that's an automatic a on the midterm so the kids is on it and I guess now we're gonna have to deal with the fact that Wes and Laurel are sneaking off and having sex so while the kids are trying to research and find out whatever they can about this case they leave they go to Laurel's house they're kissing and they taking their clothes off you know they get in the bed and the camera pans around bitch and why is fine ass frank in her house i was like oh shit <laughs> oh my god you guys i did not expect that i was just like he was just standing there like i know she's not fucking west now annalise i told you guys now that she's not drinking she's eating a lot bonnie tells her you know what how about we get laurel's dad to find fine ass frank annalise was like why don't we just get you to find fine ass frank bonnie says he's not gonna call me because i kind of said some things to him that he's not gonna be happy about you know we get the flashbacks of them in the deep in the throes of passion bonnie tells her that she told frank that you know he doesn't deserve Annalise but really are you really waiting on him to just show up and Annalise is just like I don't know I can't even think about it right now okay just feels better when I drink I wish I could have a fucking drink I was like girl I know what you mean so anyway she goes to her AA meeting and the president is there and she's up on the podium and she's giving her story about the fact that she drank so much that uh, she fell asleep on the side of the road had her kids in the car the kid had to get out of the car and try to flag down help the father of the kid sued for custody got full custody of the kids now she only has visitation supervised you know on the weekends and she knows that her kids are very upset with her and they don't have a really good relationship but she's trying she's been sober one year you know but she's just like pissed that her kids are gone from her okay that she's the mother she feels like she should have them you know they just took the kids away from her and she's just like I, you know so annalisa's there watching her tell her story and uh looks like it touches annalise a little bit when we talk about the kids after the meeting annalise goes up to the president's and she gives her her props you know you got up here and told all your business okay i don't know how you do it president says hey it gets easier just as you come you'll be able to do it too president says i heard that you got wes a lawyer and annalise was like no i just requested one to him he's got his own lawyer and then all of a sudden annalise gets a little annoyed with the president you know she kind of lashes out and the president was like listen okay don't we we all in the same boat here it is not my fault that you here you here because you slap somebody go through the motions and do what you got to do to keep your license annalise was like i'm sorry shit i'm hungry <laughs> 
back at the house, you know, when Wes and Laurel get back, you know, they had told everybody they were going to go check on a lead, okay? Well, the lead supposedly fell through. They all looking at her like, whatever. They know that they fucking. They even teased, like, was there a threesome with fine-ass Frank? I was like, child, y'all not even knowing how close it was. Shit. Now, the kid's back on the case. Asher finds an article that was emailed to the daughter about um, Annie Freeze uh, from a secret boyfriend that she had. So now the brothers want to separate their case from the sister, drop her, and, um, you know, try to fight the case against the mother just with Annalise. Because they're like, fuck, you the one got the damn article said that you was going to kill it with the antifreeze and now everybody going to think we guilty. And Annalise was like, nope, this is a conspiracy case. It's everybody. All for one, one for all. Okay, so you guys got to be united in this. But they pissed at the daughter because now she didn't made a mess of things with this fucking um, antifreeze article. What about when they was coming out the courthouse and uh, Wes ran into real nice Nate? I was like, ooh, look at real nice Nate in this suit. Child, we so used to him glistening, you know, and sweaty and having his damn tank top on. I was like, oh, he showed him clean up nice. Anyway, Nate asked Wes about the police and, uh, you know, Wes was just like, yeah, I've got a lawyer. And Annalise took care of it. And, you know, real nice Nate just looks at him like, okay, watch your back. You know Annalise like I do. And I think you do. So now they get to, they get to this court case. Mama's over there. She all got the oxygen and she frail looking and coughing and everything. They're trying to read through the text messages. Of course, it just looks a whole lot worse. The fact that she is sickly and they're talking about killing her, joking about killing the mama. But then again, there are subtle little things that happen to let you know that the mama is manipulating even this situation. There, even Annalise sees it and is just like. Mm bitch. The mama was able to get under one of the kids skin though and uh, when they were talking about his sex life and she was just like he's a virgin. He's probably still a virgin gonna die a virgin you know and the son was just like what mother teases uh, you know their son about this. I, I'll, I'll be happy the day that you die. So yeah this was a setback. You probably shouldn't say shit like this in front of the judge when you're trying to be the damn conspiracy theory of killing your damn mama. Later on we see Wes and Laurel in bed. I'm just... She says that she's scared. Is this real? She's afraid she's going to open her eyes and it's not going to be there. You know, Wes claims his undying love for her. He's been feeling this way for a long time. I'm just sitting here going. I just can't understand why Wes doesn't realize that he's a fucking rebound. Okay, and I guess really she is too, although he didn't never seem to really like the Maggie girl or whatever her name is anyway. Wes gets a phone call. It's from Connor. Connor is telling them that the news is saying that the son had a rock solid alibi, so now they knew that you lied. So it's a mess now, right? So all the Keaton five, they get up together at, at Annalise's house. They giving her the blues about it. You know, what are we going to do? Annalise was just like, I don't know. Sometimes I lie. Sometimes I lie about what's going on because I don't want you guys to worry. And they're like, what the fuck? We don't want you to lie. We want you to tell us the truth. The, the, the lies is what's fucking driving us crazy. So Annalise was just like, ain't this about a bitch? I done did all this for these kids and they still give it. Okay, fine. If y'all feeling like that, I'm going to sit this chair right here. I'm going to sit right here and we're going to get it all out. Y'all let me know how you feel about Annalise Keaton today. Because I'm sick of all the teeny little things that y'all got to say here and there, honey. Why she say that? <laughs> they was like, gladly. Annalise, come at me. Come at me. Michaela was like, you pimped me to Caleb. Connor says that we should have went to the police right after Sam was killed. Laurel says, you control me like a puppet. Asher says, you don't respect us and none of us are happy. And you guys, they are just drilling her. I mean, they just throwing it at her. You know, Bonnie kind of over there like, you guys be nice, <laughs> okay? They don't give a fuck about Bonnie. They just telling Annalise everything that she feels. And Annalise is just sitting there like, okay. She look over at Wes. She say, you want to get in on the pummeling too? And you know, Wes was like, no, I don't have nothing to say. You know how I feel about you. She She's like, okay. So after they finished their tirade of how horrible Annalise is, even though Annalise has been trying to protect all of them, but admittedly, Annalise has kind of made a mess of things. She gets up and she says, okay, y'all get a good night's sleep. See you guys tomorrow. They was like, oh, that's it? Okay. She walk out the room, they get their shit and they leave. Now, Oliver and his new boyfriend... We already knew that this was going to happen, right? So it's like the third date and 
yeah, I guess this is where the magic happens. Of course, he's on in the bed with the guy, and they ain't got their fucking clothes on, or at least their shirts is off, and they kissing, and about to get close, and you can tell that it's about to go down, and Oliver obviously hasn't told this man that he's HIV positive, so he goes to the bathroom, and he tries to get himself together, and then he comes back out, and then man, you know, the man, now he down into his underwear, and he done got the, the oils and the lubrications and the shit out the drawer, he ready to get it going, and then finally Oliver tells him that he's uh, paused. I guess that's what they say. And uh, the guy is just like, you know, taking it back. Like, is this a whole lot? I don't think I'm ready for this. Okay, I, I don't want this in this relationship. So, he, you know, Oliver gets dumped. Understandably, I'm thinking to myself, like, how do you be all the way, almost in the throes of passion, and then you want to tell somebody you positive? You probably should have did that at lunch. Then we wouldn't even had to go this far, and you wouldn't have been, you know, had now got blue balls and wanting to get it busy and, and and it just don't happen i was just like that's what the fuck he gets even though it's mean okay but i'm just like connor you had connor he accepted the fact that you had hiv i mean i would imagine that there are a lot of people that probably wouldn't want to be with somebody like that it takes a special person to still just openly be with somebody who's hiv positive right so that's what the fuck oliver gets so annalise is back at the house and she's just work worried Okay, she's worried for the kids, um, and, you know, she, when Bonnie comes and talks to her, you know, she's just like, they sure did give me, you know, the one, two, three, and Bonnie was just like, they're just scared, they don't know what to do, and Annalise was like, yeah, you're probably right, he'll help me with this case, okay, let's let's try to get this case one. Then, uh, while she's sitting there, and she's reading over paperwork, and she's listening to the um, mom talk, she gets a certain realization. Annalise tells them that the lady has poisoned herself. So she goes out and she finds Laurel and she tells Laurel, you know what, I want you to go and I want you to question the old lady and get her to admit that she poisoned herself. You know, Laurel was like, well, why are you asking me to do that? And Annalise was like, because you're my puppet. <laughs> She's such a bitch. Laurel sits down with the lady and they in the court and you know she's just like asking her questions about her relationship with the kids and she's fumbling around okay so it's kind of looking like she don't know what the hell she's doing she asked the lady about the kids love life does she get involved in the love life and she says yes and then she asked her you know about the um, boyfriend of the daughter somehow the mama knows about the boyfriend Laurel was just like well how do you know about the boyfriend if she never told anybody about the boyfriend Okay, is it because you read the damn email where the boyfriend sent the instructions on how to kill somebody with antifreeze to your daughter? The mom is just looking around like, oh, oh okay. I was like, y'all don't get this woman a heart attack up in there. The lawyer's trying to stop it, but you know, they're just like, no, no, no. you knew you looked at her um, emails and that's the reason why you did that because you was trying to get back at them. You poisoned your own self so to make them feel bad. You know, the mom was just like, yeah, well. Maybe they won't take me for granted from now on. So Laurel gets her automatic A. She wants to take all of her co-students out uh, to celebrate. Again, Annalise bumps into the president and uh, she tells her, you know what, I'm going to give you this information whether you want it or not. This is the best family attorney around. Her name is Nina Horton. The president is shocked. She's just sort of looking at Annalise like, thanks. But boy, she looked like she want to grab her and kiss her right in the mouth, right? Annalise gets on home and, you know, Wes is there and they commiserate and have a pity party about who is the worst person again, okay? He tells her that he saw Real Nice Nate at the courthouse and how Real Nice Nate said that um, Wes need to look out for Annalise. And then Wes is just like, no, maybe you need to be protected from me. And then she was like, no, you can't feel like that. You know, you got to live your life. And, you know, that's what your mama would want. So, you know, they keep on having this same conversation, the two of them. We skip to Bonnie, and she's at home, and she's reading up about the Mahoney son, you know. And there's a knock at the door, and who should it be but fine-ass Frank. You know, she looks at him like, you know, she kind of looking at him like this. And he looking at him like, oh. <laughs> And so Bonnie lets fine ass Frank in the house and, um, you know, he's telling her, like, you know what, you were right. I need to just talk to Annalise and just tell everything, um, tell her everything that happened and she'll forgive me. And Bonnie was just like, well, it's too late now. I had to lie to Annalise for you. You made me look stupid. You just left me in the motel. You came here, but you probably went to Laurel's house first and she probably saw her fucking old West. I'm just your sloppy seconds. Don't try to come over here asking me for help. He's like, no, 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 I need you. I need you more than anybody else, you know, and she was just like whatever fine ass frank okay tell it to the next hoe you killed us when you left me in that motel room get out of my fucking house he was like no i can't leave i can't leave she was like get out my house i don't have nothing else to do with you 
Get out of my house. So now fine ass Frank doesn't have the help of Bonnie. Bonnie tries to call Annalise to tell her what happened and Annalise is asleep. So she doesn't know that fine ass Frank is right in the neighborhood. Then of course we get the scene that we all knew was coming. Oliver goes to Connor's house. He's drunk and he's telling him how the new boyfriend wouldn't want to be with him because he's HIV positive. He misses Connor and Connor is like, I miss you too. I was just like, oh yeah, that Connor is definitely in love. Okay, because Oliver is treating him like an asshole and Connor is taking it. They go and they have sex. This is at Michaela's house. We see Michaela and Asher, they get home from a party. They want to get busy and they get home. I thought of, uh, you know, Connor and and, um, Oliver was going to be having sex, but they were done and they was already back in the living room. I guess this means that their relationship is back on. Don't really know what it means for the two of them. But um, Asher is really happy that everybody is back together and friends again. Laurel and Wes are talking on the phone, laughing about her A and how she was able to win the case. And when she gets off the phone from him, she tells him, I love you. And he hangs up the phone and then she sees the reflection in the window in front of her. You guys in this fucking fine ass Frank, okay? She turns around all shocked and he was just like, really? <laughs> you love Wes? I was just like, that's exactly what I'm saying, fine ass Frank. Then it jumps back to two weeks in the future at the fire, you know, at least Laurel in the hospital, you know, she wakes up with a start, okay? She can't breathe. She got the oxygen mask. She's all panicking. Maggie is just like, calm down. Wait a minute. What you want? What you want? You know, she motions to a pen, and uh, Maggie's like, oh, you want a pen? You know, she writes down Wes, and Maggie's like, well, look, I, you know, I don't know where he is, but we'll get in touch with him, and we'll have him talk to you as soon as we can, okay? We just need you to relax. It's gonna be okay. Just chill out, okay? Then we see Wes. Looks like he is at a police station. Looks like he is telling some information to the investigators. Remember we were talking about that anonymous source? Looks like it's Wes, you guys. That's right. He's telling them that he will give them all the information on Annalise to take her down as long as he gets blanket immunity over this whole thing. And I'm just sitting there looking like, now this is a super strange twist. There has to be some angle, the reason why Wes is doing this. I can't see him totally turning on Annalise like this. I think this is all part of their plan. It just doesn't make sense to us right now. As far as the who's under the sheet, Wes is out of the lineup. I didn't think Wes was under there. I still don't think it's real nice, Nate. I really think it's Connor. But it's going to be between Connor and Finance Frank. Um, Connor is at the top of my list, but if it's not Connor, then I am going to assume that it is Finance Frank, which is going to really break my heart. But hey, y'all know how it works in Shonda's world. I know it's Peter Novak. So somebody else get in my fucking comments be like, this is not really her show. She don't write it. Okay. I got all that. Okay, I got all that. But y'all know how they do on these shows. Everybody is disposable. Okay, so we're going to see next week. I guess we find out who's under the sheet still. Who do you guys think it is? All right, you guys, that's it. I have to go back up to my desk. I don't have time to go to lunch today, so I'm just going to eat me some... Um, <laughs> I got some chicken Vienna sausages with some sriracha hot sauce and some Triscuits. Y'all, that's going to be lunch today. Also, I want to remind everybody to get out and vote. If you are in Georgia or if you're in a state where you can do your early vote, and I think you can still early vote all the way up till Sunday. Do your civic duty. I know there's many of people that are saying they're not going to vote, and oh, I just can't understand. Even if you're not interested in the presidential election, there are other local matters. This is a general election where you can vote on things that matter in your community. So I think it's important to do so. But I, I, I you know, I've, I've heard a lot of people say they're not going to. I just, please get out and vote. That's all I want to say. Okay. Anyway, let me get off of here. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel's for It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right. All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rockstars. Bye.